thanks for staying with us last week, the 13th of October 2022, was World Sight Day, a day set aside <coughs> for an annual awareness event which focuses on vision, impairment, and blindness. The theme for this year is Love Your Eyes, and it highlights <laughs> the need to look after our vision, impairment, and blindness. Join us on the show now is the national president of the Nigerian Optometric Association, Dr. Obina Awaika. Good morning. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Good morning. Dr. Waika. Thanks for having me. Good to have you on the show. <clears throat> yes. So this... Uh, Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Let's, let's go straight to the point because we, we want to learn so much from you. Um, this blindness that people experience, sometimes impairment in the insight, and this year's theme of the, um, the <clears throat> national, um, the, the, the World Blind Day, World Sight Day, is love your eyes. How are we pushing people to love their eyes? And how can we love our eyes? I'll hate to know. Okay, thank you very much. Um, like you already said earlier on, uh, the second Thursday of October every year has been set aside to draw attention to the importance of eye care. And uh, last week, the 13th of October was the World Sight Day. And this uh, World Sight Day uh, theme this year is Love Your Eyes. It's actually a continuation of the theme for last year. So last year, we started with the theme Love Your Eyes, and we continue this year. And it's actually to make people prioritize eye care, prioritize taking care of their eyes, to put it at the front burners, both the patients, both the doctors, both the lawmakers and the okay. government. We want everybody to be involved in taking care of your eyes because we know that uh, the economic impact of blindness is real. When one man uh, who, is hmm. a fan, who is the breadwinner or a woman who is the breadwinner loses their sight, it's, it causes a ripple effect. It can even affect the children's education and a lot of other things. So that is why we are drawing the world's attention to the importance of taking care of your eyes. And a lot of ways you can do it is to ensure that first you prioritize mm. your eye care. Put it at the top of your list, your wow. checklist for the year. That every year I must have an eye examination. The reason is very simple. A lot of eye problems have don't have symptoms. So they will not tell you, uh, the, the eye will not tell you that, oh, something is about to happen to me. It can just happen. And so it is important you go and have an eye check to be able to detect this problem before it goes bad. We've had situations whereby uh, people have been turned blind. They've, they've been sent to uh, the school of the blind when they actually have high myopia, high visual impairment. And these problems are continuing all the time. And so we want the world to know that the eye test is important. Prioritize it. Secondly, you have to prevent. A lot of things can be prevented. If you go for an earlier early eye test and uh, you have an early detection of a problem, right. you can actually prevent it from getting worse. worse. And so you see a lot of people losing their vision from glaucoma, from cataract, and these are things that can easily be prevented. Right. So we want to prioritize, we want you to prevent, and we want you to know that your eye is important. Okay, Dr. Awaika, um, how, before um, we talk about go going to medical centers or the eye doctor, what can I do, you know, every day mm. to show that I love my eyes and not harm my eyes? <clears throat> Okay. Simple thing I tell people to do. When you wake up in the morning, you do a self-visual examination. Okay. And how do you do it? You, you cover one of your eyes and look at something far, try and see if you can see a, a far object, and then you try covering the other eye to see if you can still see with both eyes. Because a lot of people are blind, even on one eye, and they are moving about because the other eye can still I see. I had a case in one in, in one in my practice where a beauty pageant, a, be a, a, a beauty okay. queen uh, came with her friends uh, for an eye examination, and I urged her to do an eye examination. And by the time she covered one eye, she discovered she was blind in the other eye, I and she never that. knew that. And she's been walking around, driving around with that problem. So we tell people the first thing to do 
have a self-examination on yourself and ensure that you can see. And there are a lot of other eye problems you cannot detect even just by covering your eyes. That is why you eventually need to see an eye care practitioner, preferably a primary care provider who is an optometrist, to help okay. you know what the problem is. Right. Some of these problems are in, in, in internal, they are systemic. Right. Yes, they are systemic because uh, you can detect uh, hypertension, you can detect diabetes, you can detect even HIV through the eyes. That's wow. why the eye is known as the That's window awesome. of the body. This through right. the Let eye, me get you a few more questions in for you. A lot of this problem. That is why it's essential you see a primary eye care provider, an right. optometrist. So, what, what um, type of um, observation do we pay or attention do we give to children that are growing? So, I realized that. At a certain point in time, my little daughter couldn't stand the sun. And I just paid attention a few times and realized that when she's in the sun, one eye is closed. Till I had to take her to the hospital and I realized she needed to start wearing glasses. So there are lots of people who are raising kids and they come to you, they complain, mommy, my eyes, I say, go, go, go and sit down, go and take this, go and take that, and you move on. What sort of attention should we pay to young ones when it comes to their eyes? Thank you very much. Um, uh, we recently discovered that a lot of uh, parents have this need that my child should not wear glasses. My child is not supposed to have an eye problem because he's the child. My grandfather did not wear glasses till he was 95. You know, we say a lot of all this meat. We forget that the times are different, the kind of food we eat is different, the kind of activities we do. A child as early as six months has already started using your phone even better than you. Mm -hmm. And this guy just exposed a lot of rays into their eyes. That is why it's essential that from at the age of six months, a child must have an eye examination. Now, wow. look at this. This year's World Side Day, we decided that we we're going to visit the, the National Assembly. And we did an eye test with the lawmakers. We had to make them understand that we have to begin to enact enabling laws that will help people prioritize their eye tests, especially children. A child should not be allowed to go to school without an eye examination because he's going to use that eye for his studies. Mm -hmm. He's going to use that eye to identify colors. He's going to use that okay. eye to play with play with other children. If the child doesn't have good vision, the child is going to have a problem and developmental problem. We're going to say the child is not intelligent. No, your child is intelligent. Probably your child is just colorblind and does not see color. So as early as six months, a child should have an eye examination. And from two to five years before they get into school, they must have another eye examination. Right. And we want the government to enact laws mm. to ensure that these things are done before right. you get into school you right. must have a preschool eye examination wow Go ahead, okay so um thank you for joining us dr awaika i'm doing the test already <laughs> but uh, my question to you is what are dietary preferences that we should focus on so what food should we avoid should we not avoid what food should we eat more to um, help us keep our eye in check Okay, thank you. I always tell people when you visit the eye care practitioner, the optometrist, after your examination, you will always be counseled on what you need to do and what you don't need to do. But on air today, I'm going to tell you easily, there are a lot of foods that can help you with your eyes. And these foods are easily identified by their colors. Usually the best ones are color green, the green ones. They help you, they, they have a lot of antioxidants that help with the vision. And a lot of people run away from green uh, vegetables, from cucumber, from a lot of these things because they want the sweeter ones, they want the ones that are easily, uh, that they can easily assess. But trust me, these green vegetables, these green fruits are usually better. Then we have the citrus fruit, we have the uh, watermelon and a lot of other ones that also help in bringing antioxidants into the eyes, boosting the antioxidants of the eyes for your eye to be healthy. And so we tell people to eat right. Don't, you, don't, you don't need to eat uh, fast food. You don't need, uh, if you want to send your child to school, put an apple inside the bag, put a, a, an orange inside the bag instead of a meat pie. This, this can help in the child, child development. That's the gist. Thank you. I have, a, I have a message from somebody who says, um, 
they have an albino, their child is an albino, and they, they, they struggle with him or her seeing at night and during the day. How, how can you help this kind of person who doesn't know how to handle a little baby a child who is albino and having issues with her eyes? Okay, thank you very much for that question. I tell people uh, uh, an albino child simply or albino person simply does not have a pigment melanin. Mm -hmm. And this pigment, pigment because, uh, because it is absent, it will affect the vision. It is definitely going to affect how the child sees and what the child sees. And because a child, usually uh, they are adaptive. When they try to see and they are not able to see, they lose interest in trying to see. And so they move their attention to something else. So I will advise that as early as possible, you need to take that child to see an optometrist. You need to, that eye needs to be examined. We need to know the, the, the ability of the eye to see and what aid that can be given to that child in order to see better. So a lot of them I even, uh, can even um, learn from, uh, get help from low vision, low vision aids. And these things can only be available when you visit your eye doctor. Okay, doctor, you know that many times we have some of these um, centers in different malls or around the street corners, and many times it seems as if people, they're just, they're so quick to just recommend glasses. <clears throat> so I want to know, who is an ophthalmologist? Who is an optometrist? Who do you see first? Who is supposed to diagnose if you truly need glasses and not that you end up with someone that just wants to sell his glasses? Okay, thank you very much. I said earlier on, the optometrist is the primary eye care provider. They are the people you need to see first. Okay. It's the doctor that will examine your eye, will examine the systemic uh, part of your eye in the back of your eye and everything that concerns your eye. And the optometrist will tell you the result of that examination. If it is a refractive error, then that is only when you need glasses. If you don't have a refractive error, you will not be asked to use glasses. Some people uh, don't have refractive error, but they, all, they have problem with reading from their system. They have problem with rays of light when they drive. Those yes. people can also be given glasses with some special effect on the glasses mm -hmm. to help them divert the rays of light while driving. So it is not every eye clinic you enter that they give you glasses. No, you must have the need for the glasses. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that optometrist explain to you why you need the glasses. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, well, the, the secondary providers are the ophthalmologists. Well, so when the optometrist is done seeing you and you need for that examination, the optometrist can now refer you to an ophthalmologist who is also licensed to do surgery right. on your eyes. The optometrist cannot uh, perform major surgeries, right. except uh, some little uh, minor oh. ones. So okay, the ophthalmologist will now uh, take care of your glaucoma or your cataract or any of the oh. major retinal surgeries. Okay, doctor, um, is there any tip you And then give... there's also a confusing part. Is there any tip? Yes, you there's also to... a confusing part. The the a lot of people, a lot of people call the optometrists opticians. Mm -hmm. The optometrists are not opticians. The optometrists are doctors. Opticians are like pharmacies. They mm -hmm. dispense the lenses. No, so I'm don't okay. you go and see an optician so to do an examination for you. Uh -huh. Make sure you see That's an optometrist. Optician. They have to sell market. Mm. So doctor, um, is there any tip you can give to people who are always on the computers? Some of us have to read all the time. Is there any way we can you know, help ourselves so that our eyes don't <laughs> begin to degenerate? Thank you very much. Uh, I, I always give this to people that use a, a visual display unit, computer systems, and all that. There's what we call a 2020 rule. So that means for every 20 minutes you look at the computer, you have to look away to something far, to a distant object for 20 seconds. Wow. That way, your eye muscles are active. Oh. They are exercising. 
I need you to understand that just as you have muscles in your body, you also have muscles in your eyes. Mm. Just as the muscles in your body will tell you to stand up and walk around and move around. If I sit for too long, my wristwatch will tell me it's time to move. That is the same thing. The muscles of your eyes also need to be exercised. So they don't need to stay in one uh, position for a, a long, long time. time. Wow. So I'm just hearing after this. every 20 minutes of looking at the system, hours. Always look away for 20 seconds. Wow. Oh, fantastic. I so think that's like, a fantastic tip. Like, you, um, keep a timer. <laughs> yeah, my, my kids can stay hours. Mm. I was going to say the final question for a wrap-up because... Yes, yeah, so you, can, you can set it on your system. Yeah, yeah. timer. So, um, people are scared of glasses because they feel that when you wear glasses... Uh, early, you're now old. You end up... Yeah, you're old. In fact, you end up you being blind. Stop. When you get to 18, 90, you'll be blind. You're already wearing glasses at this stage. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> you have both. Yeah, so mm. that's, that's why people don't want to wear glasses. Is that still a fact, or has that been is it taken by new new facts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, glasses are necessary when you have refractive error, or when you, you need to protect yourself from rays of light or from the sunlight. If you don't have any of this, you would not be recommended. You would not uh, have the optometrist recommend glasses to you. But I tell people. Glasses is not a, 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 a death sentence. It's not something bad. It, I wear glasses. You can see my glasses. It's not something bad. It's something that will help you see better, especially in children. Your eyes are not fully developed at birth. Mm. And if you don't have good vision, they will not be fully developed. Okay. So you need those glasses to be able to see well, for the eyes to be fully developed. Mm. And I tell people, it has nothing to do with old age. When you are short-sighted, <laughs> you need glasses. Ew. When you are long-sighted, you, you need glasses. glasses. When you have astigmatism, you need glasses. glasses. <laughs> then when you have presbyopia, which is the one that has to do with age, mm. you also need glasses. glasses. Mm. So they are all called refractive errors. And I want to tell you, refractive error is the number one cause of visual impairment in the world. A lot of people, instead of glasses, they have gone to blind school. Mm. They, they, their, their parents have taken okay, to, I saw one somewhere in Joss. She was in the blind school, and really what she needed was glasses. Can you imagine? Mm. She <laughs> Hi. All right, thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, uh, sir. I think we learned quite a few things thank from you. you. Thank you. So, so in, in, don't go and see an optician. Those guys that are selling mm. markets, don't go and sell optician. You must buy glasses. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. so, those don't don't see those you. ones. We, we are working very well with, with the optometrist and the special optician registration board of Nigeria okay. nice. to eradicate quacks of our, of our roads. Okay. And they are working yeah. yeah. tirelessly day, day, day and night. <laughs> all right, that's all we can take on the show this morning. Hope you learned a few things as we have. See you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.